एंड वेलकम टू माई चैनल दिस इज कीर्तिका वेलकमिंग यू टू अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन कॉर्निया कॉर्नियल टोपोग्राफी एंड टोमोग्राफी सो द वर्ड टोपोग्राफी कम्स फ्रॉम प्लानिटरी साइंस विच मीन्स स्टडी ऑफ सरफेस शेप एंड फीचर्स ऑफ अर्थ जस्ट लाइक वी हैव द टोपोग्राफी ऑफ द अर्थ इन विच वी हैव माउंटेन्स वी हैव पीक्स वी हैव वैलीज वी हैव रिवर्स सीज which all tells us about the surface of the earth which is called as the topography of the earth in a very similar manner we have the topography of the cornea as well the topography of the cornea will tell us about the surface of the cornea so the term topography refers to a detailed representation or description of the surface characteristic of a structure and in corneal topography this structure is cornea so corneal topography which is also known as photokeratoscopy or video keratoscopy is a non invasive medical imaging technique non invasive means any medical procedure that does not involve the introduction of instrument into the body so corneal topography is a non invasive medical imaging technique used for mapping the anterior curvature of the cornea or the outer surface of the eye now next what is tomography so tomography is the process of generating a two dimensional cross sectional image of a slice through a three dimensional object which means if we have a ball like this which is a three dimensional structure and now we are going to take a slice like this and look it at a two dimensional image so this is called as tomography and corneal tomography is characterized by the elevation of the front and back corneal surfaces and reconstructs a pachymetry mapping which has significantly enhanced the sensitivity and specificity for detecting corneal ectasia suppose this is the anterior surface and this is the posterior surface and when we take a slice through the surface of cornea we are able to see not just the anterior surface but also the posterior surface and we can also be able to find out the thickness of the cornea by studying the distance of the anterior and posterior surface and subtracting them so in corneal tomography along with topography we can also find out the pachymetry pachymetry means the thickness of the cornea it is very important to understand what is the difference between topography and tomography before we can proceed so if you have a circle or a ball and when you are describing about the surface of that ball you are talking about the topography similarly in cornea which is actually a three dimensional structure it has an anterior surface a posterior surface and between them is a stoma when we are just talking about the anterior surface of cornea its elevation depression its regularities and irregularities but limiting us just to the anterior surface of cornea we are discussing about the topography of the cornea however in tomography it is the process of generating a two dimensional cross sectional image of a slice through a three dimensional object so if we have a spherical ball like this and we cut out a slice through it and study then it is called as tomography because in this we can find out the anterior surface the posterior surface and pachymetry that is the thickness of the cornea so we can say that tomography is equals to topography plus pachymetry now these are the various principle or techniques of corneal topography and tomography so these technique are placed in order of their evolution as how the topography and tomography originated the first technology is placido disc based keratoscopy the second technology is slit scanning elevation topography third technology is rotating shine flux imaging next technology is rotating optical coherence tomography and the last one is arc scanning principle with very high frequency ultrasound here the placido disc technology will give us only topography but the rest four will give us tomography as well as topography because they are more advanced technology now we will study each technique separately to understand its concept the first technology we have is the placido disc technology which is the oldest technology when we talk about topography 
and this instrument uses the first Purkinje image to form its image that is on the anterior surface of the cornea. As we already know that there are four Purkinje images. First Purkinje image is formed due to anterior surface of cornea. Second Purkinje image is formed due to posterior surface of cornea. Third one is formed due to the anterior surface of the lens. And the fourth one, the last one is formed due to posterior surface of the lens. So Placido disc is a reflective technology and this device consists of a disc like this in which we have concentric rings of light and dark bands. And this instrument will reflect these rings onto the cornea. The Placido disc has a small aperture in its center for observing the corneal reflections of these light and dark bands over the cornea. Now the examination of these reflected rings give information about the shape of the cornea. The image processing software will analyze the distance between these rings onto the cornea and will deduce the structure of anterior surface of the cornea. Wherever the distance between the ring is less or the rings appear more crowded than normal, the cornea is steeper at those areas. And wherever the distance between the ring is more means less crowded, there the cornea is flat. So, by using these information, the software will convert these spacing between the cornea into corneal map and these map will tell you about the anterior surface of the cornea. So, these images shows projection of Placido disc mire. Image A shows a normal cornea with good mires and minimal astigmatism. Image B shows a cornea with surface dryness. Image C shows a cornea with regular against the rule astigmatism within a full thickness corneal transplant and the last image D shows a cornea with irregular astigmatism within a full thickness corneal transplant. Placido images can also help to guide selective suture removal. For example, in image C, the suture could be removed at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock to reduce post-operative astigmatism. So, in spite of having all these advantages, Placido disc has many disadvantages as well. A small degree of abnormalities of corneal shape cannot be easily identified by this instrument. It is severely affected by tear film disturbances because all these Placido disc reflections are reflected from the tear film. So, in patients who do not have good tear film, we might have distorted myes and these distorted mires will not give correct information about the anterior surface curvature of the cornea. Also, it cannot be used in corneal edema, corneal ulcers, epithelial defects, etc. Clinically significant cylinder up to 3 diopter may not be diagnosed with this instrument. Subtle irregularities, which is not very noticeable, also cannot be detected. Also, the patient is exposed to high light for the procedure. Anatomy of the nose and orbit may limit field size and restrict the corneal area that can be examined. Next technology is slit scanning elevation topography. Because Placido disc only gives us information about anterior surface curvature and we need more posterior details, so we have slit scanning technology. It is also called as a scanning slit elevation technology. In this, Multiple complementary slits will be used and they will perform the assessment of corneal surface. Example of this technology is orb scan and in orb scan around 40 slits are projected, 20 from nasal side and 20 from the temporal side. So as you can see in this image, this is the projector and it will be constantly forming slits from both the sides and evaluating the surface of the cornea. So in total, we are evaluating around 240 points on each slits. We have total of 40 slits and on per slits, we are evaluating 240 points. So you can imagine how extensive this study is. And thus, it can give anterior curvature, posterior curvature, elevation and pachymetry maps of the entire corneal surface. Now, the next technology is rotating Scheinflug imaging or Scheinflug technology for tomography. According to Scheinflug principle, when a planar subject is not parallel to the image plane, an oblique tangent can be drawn from the image, object and lens plane and the point of intersection is called Scheinflug intersection. So let me explain this to you. 
So in normal or traditional photography, what happens is that the plane of the camera will always be parallel to the plane of the lens and this will be parallel to the plane of the object or target and this is how we can take a very clear image. But in the case of cornea, as we all know that cornea is not a planar structure, then there will be problem in focusing the image of the cornea. As in the first image, the object plane, the lens plane and the image plane, all three are parallel to each other. And since these are parallel to each other, we will get a very clear image. But in case of cornea, the surface is a non-planar surface. So, there might be a problem that the object plane and the lens plane is not parallel to each other and thus the image will not be clear. In that case, Scheinflug imaging come into play. In Scheinflug imaging, when there is such a tilt due to non-planar surfaces, the technology will tilt the plane by itself. It will tilt the plane in such a way that the object plane, the lens plane and the image plane will intersect at a single common point and thus we will have a good clear image. This is known as Scheinflug technology. So in Scheinflug technology, the cross-sectional image is taken by tilting the planes in such a way that all the three planes intersect at a common single point focus. In this way, cross-sectional images are taken and you will get the information about the anterior curvature, the posterior curvature and the thickness of the cornea. Along with this, we also get information about the anterior chamber depth and sometimes the detail about the lens also. So, the advantages of Scheinflug camera, which is found in Pentacam, Sirius and Galilei is that it will not only tell us about the anterior curvature of the cornea, that is the topography of the cornea, but will also give details about the pachymetry or corneal thickness. It will also tell us about the anterior chamber depth. Along with this, we will also get anterior and posterior float, that is anterior and posterior curvature which is based on elevation data and will also tell about the posterior curvature of the cornea whose information is very much needed when we talk about the early keratoconus where the posterior curvature of the cornea is affected first. One more function this tomographer has is densitometry function. This densitometry function of Scheinflug tomography will tell us about the density of the cornea and lens. So the densitometry function should be less than 30 which means that the cornea is clear. When it is more than 30 then it means cornea is opaque. Now comes the clinical uses of corneal topography and tomography. First, screening for corneal ectasias. Corneal ectasias like in keratoconus, pellucid marginal degenerations, terrans marginal degeneration and keratoglobus in which there is corneal thinning and that thin part of the cornea will bulge out forward so corneal topographer is very useful in screening for corneal ectasias. Next, corneal ectasia monitoring and treatment. It is very useful for monitoring ectasias. Where there is a progressive ectasia or progressive keratoconus, the tomographer can monitor its progression at each stage and thus can help in the treatment process. Next is refractive surgery screening and monitoring. We all know that whenever the patient undergoes a refractive procedure, the shape and surface of the cornea is changed to correct the refractive error. So this technology will help the surgeon to understand how he need to shape the cornea to rule it out. Next is pre-operative intraocular lens selection where the information about the anterior chamber depth is taken from the topographer and tomographer. Keratoplasty astigmatism evaluation and management. The patient who undergo keratoplasty will have lots of sutures and which can result into suture induced astigmatism due to pull over the cornea. Corneal topographer can be used to evaluate and manage these to reduce chances of poor vision. Last is ocular surface disorder which can also be done using this. So this was all about this part of the video. In the next part, we'll study about the Pentacam and its concept. If it was useful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Keep learning and have a good day.